Okay, everybody, this is for my health science clinical rotation students as well as my medical billing and coding students. The first sheet is your student information sheet. Now, yes, I can look you up in the computer, but sometimes we don't always have power or the internet may be down. And so I ask that you complete the top page for that reason. This also has your schedule on it, and it's easier for us to just pull your clinical application sometimes again than rather trying to go on the computer because of other reasons unbeknownst to us. On the very bottom, I need you to list below any medical concerns or conditions because I need to know if you're allergic to something, if you need a particular medication, you have asthma. That information will not be disseminated or shared with anyone else but me. But I need to know because, again, if a medical emergency occurs and I don't know, I won't know what to do. So please put that information. If you do not have any medical concerns, just put a nice little N slash A for not applicable. All right. This is the student parent agreement for unpaid work-based learning experience. You do not get paid in money or monetary donations or anything like that, but you will get paid one hour and a half of community service for every day that you attend and participate in clinical rotations. The first line, or let's go ahead and go through this together. You ab agree to abide by the following rules and regulations during the unpaid work-based learning experience, classroom experience, and all other class-related activities. You will complete required coursework during unpaid work-based learning experience. All DNISD will provide transportation. You are not allowed to drive your own vehicle, so you have to ride the yellow bus, the yellow limo, and the bus waits for no one. If you are late, we have a time frame to stay within, and if you are late, you will miss the bus. That will either, add, that will either end up as an absence or zero. Be punctual for all classes and clinical experiences. Notify me immediately if you are tardy or absent. The best way to do that at this point would be email, but we'll set up Remind and you'll be able to contact me that way. The school policy on tardies will apply after 10 minutes of tardy is considered an absence, but after 10 minutes we'll be gone, so you'll be absent anyway. Unpaid work-based learning experience cannot be made up. So if you're absent, it's just, it's either excused or zero. And it can affect your learning grade or your overall grade. You understand that your work, your unpaid work-based learning experience is a part of the educational program and you will not receive any type of compensation. Again, you will be awarded with an hour and a half of community service every day that you participate. You will make it your responsibility to know, understand, and adhere to the guidelines and procedures of each unpaid work-based learning site. You will be courteous, efficient, and accurate in all the tasks to which you are assigned in order to protect the patient, healthcare team, and yourself. You understand that you will be evaluated during each unpaid work-based learning rotation by the clinical staff. So if you would now pull out your clinical evaluation form, it shows you the areas in which you will be evaluated. These forms will need to be turned in every three weeks because that's your rotation schedule. Every three weeks, you will rotate to a new site. Some of my seniors, you may be at the same site. But your, app, your evaluation forms will still be due every three weeks. You, At this point, you will need to learn how to become open 
to constructive evaluation so that you can develop positive professional traits and behaviors. Because the evaluation is an unpaid work-based learning grade, any concerns regarding the evaluation process will be discussed with me. The clinical staff members are not to be contacted by students or parents at any time. I understand, or that you understand, that you may not go to unpaid work-based learning training facilities except during the specified hours without approval from me. If you are at a facility and they allow you to come in additional hours and it's somewhere that you like to go, that's something that needs to be facilitated by me. And we can work that out if it's something you like to do. You agree to the following dress code. You will wear the required uniform specified the, by us at all clinical facilities. The uniform is to be clean, neatly pressed, and appropriately worn during clinical activities. Please make sure that you iron at least or put them in the dryer to dust out the wrinkles because there's nothing more unappealing than a worker in wrinkled scrubs. I will wear my name tag at all unpaid working based learning times and will promptly replace our lost damage tag. Temporary IDs are not allowed. I will make you go buy another one. So for liability purposes, you may not be able to participate because they cannot identify who you are and where you come from. White shoes and white undershirts must be worn with the uniform. What I mean by white shoes is that they have to be all white leather tennis shoes. Canvas tennis shoes such as kids are not allowed because bodily fluids medication can seep through the canvas tennis shoe and they're not easy to clean. We'd rather have you a shoe that you can wipe off, you can put in the washing machine, you can clean those off fairly easy. So they have to be all white leather tennis shoes. The white undershirt can be a camisole, a men's undershirt. If you're going to wear a long sleeve undershirt, it needs to be white, all white. And if you're going to wear a t-shirt, it has to also be all white. I will wear no other jewelry except a watch with a second hand. It is very important that you start wearing a regular watch. If you have a digital watch, you can always change the face to a second hand because once we start getting into vitals, you need to know how to use a watch to do so. Females are only allowed to wear stud earrings and no hoops. Hair will be a collar length or shorter or neatly pulled back and secured. I understand or you understand that extreme hairstyles are not acceptable. You will practice good hygiene, wear no perfumes or colognes. We used to say lightly scented but some of you don't know what that means and you come in with flower power so there is just absolutely no perfume none at all so no spraying it on the bus no spraying it in my room especially not in my room oh not in my room and you are allowed to wear makeup but it needs to be moderate and tame not like you're going to the club or to a party wear work so who are you trying to impress, especially at the nursing home? It is very disgusting if you do this. Do not eat, drink, chew gum. I don't expect any of you to smoke while you're at your rotation site. Now, some of the sites do have delis, vending machines. You're free to get something before we leave. But I should not ever see you eating with a patient, eating something from a patient, or anywhere in the site if you're not finished with your shift. I will keep my nails clean, neatly trimmed and manicured, and no acrylic. No acrylic. No acrylic is allowed. No clear polish. No fingernail polish. 
nails need to be nice and short because acrylic carries bacteria so it, no it's not allowed the code of conduct I will comply with any instruction from the unpaid work-based learning supervisor immediately without question while at the clinical setting now with this if you have a problem with the supervisor or the facilitator of a site that is my fight that is my battle so if you have an issue you need to come and get me or you need to report it to me so I can handle it not at ever any point do you ever try to have an altercation or discussion with the facilitator or supervisor that is my job to do that is what I'm there for and I will fight tooth and nail but you better be right because if you're in the wrong then we're going to have a problem so as long as you're right I have no problem going to bat for you but do not get into any altercations with an adult at a rotation site B generally doesn't apply to you because I encourage you to go to other sites I encourage you to talk to other medical professionals so you are generally not restricted to a set unit per se unless we go to a different site or a new site you cannot will not ain't gonna happen discuss your private life while in the presence of a patient give out your personal information such as your Facebook Twitter snapchat Instagram phone number and or personal email these are your patients they're not your friends so that is a no-no don't do it don't go don't get involved with anyone to do it if they try to coerce you into giving that information just tell them that you can't it's honest you're at work and and no you can't do that illness is a condition that you observe will not be discussed with or in the presence of patients or students at school you don't know who you're coming across and you don't know whose relatives you're treating so if i hear you catch you find you saying anything about somebody grandma auntie daddy you're in trouble because you have violated HIPAA and you have violated this contract. Don't do that. Don't do it at all. I will respect and properly care for all equipment at my rotation site. Cell phones, I've already said this, must not be visible at any time and remain on vibrate. I will observe strict infection control measures and will follow all facility safety rules and I will not remove or take any medication, equipment, products, or other personal items that does not belong to me. It's sad that we have to put this in our contract, but there was a student at another Albany ISD high school which shall remain nameless. He did something that was very illegal and he was arrested. Not only was he kicked out of school, but he was kicked out of the program. So I don't want that to ever, it should not, better not, ever happen with any of y'all. So you will sign this, stating that you have read all the rules regarding rotation and all campus procedures. You understand that not remaining compliance with any of these rules will reflect in your grade and potentially lead from dismissal from the program. You and your parent will sign this document this is your confidentiality statement it is letting me know that with the school district and the rotation facility that you will keep confidential any information regarding patients as well as confidential information of the rotation facility the undersigned agrees under penalty of law not to reveal any persons or persons Except authorized clinical staff and associated personnel any specific information regarding any patient and further agrees not to reveal to any third party any confidential information of the rotation facility. And then you also have your statement of responsibility. 
for and in consideration of the benefit provided the undersigned in the form of experience in evaluation and treatment of the patients of the rotation facility or clinical facility, the undersigned and his or her heirs, successors, and or assigned does hereby covenant and agree to be solely responsible for any injury or loss sustained by the undersigned while participating in the unpaid work-based learning program operated by the Aldean School District and the clinical facility. Unless such injury or loss arises solely out of the clinical facility's gross negligence or willful misconduct. Now you have an application that looks or has a logo like this. This is your liability insurance that is paid for for you by the district. So if anything should happen to you via accident, regardless if it's yours or not, the district has you covered. So fret not, if there's an accident, you can get treated. Well, going back to this application, I don't remember what side it's on, but it says the Explorer's signature. Please make sure that you do sign this. I believe it's at the right bottom corner. Make sure that you sign this because if you don't, it prolongs our process of us getting approved for our insurance. So everyone has to make sure they sign it at the very bottom. And also make sure that your parents sign it. And if they ask, what is this packet for? It's for your liability insurance that is provided by the district. You will come back to this page, print, sign, parent signature, and I think I signed mine already. This right here is the release of liability for travel for school sponsored trips. You're going to be on a bus with me majority of the time, three, two to three times a week. And this is your permission slip to get on my yellow limo. If I do not have this signed, you cannot go anywhere. So again, this is your permission to travel on school provided transportation. This right here is your TB skin test form. I put it in here as a courtesy, but most times when you go for your TB skin test, they'll provide you with a shot record or documentation stating that you have completed a TB skin test and if it's positive or negative. You can take this to your doctor and they can complete it or you can bring me what they've given you. Again, this is a courtesy. You don't have to use this. This is for your hepatitis B form. It's best that you just provide me with a copy of your shot record because this is a series that you had to get as a young child. And it's a three shot series so you should have it because you needed it to enroll in school so again I'll need a copy of your shot record to show that you've had all three series of your hepatitis B now follow me with this right here since you've had it this is the only section on this application that you need to complete. Where it says, I understand the risk of acquiring hepatitis B virus infection. I have initiated the hepatitis B vaccine series on number one, number two, number three for the above named student. You don't need this part up here. Just put a line through it right now. Put an X through it. You do not need this section. Because again, I know all of you have had a hepatitis B series of vaccinations and I need a copy of your vaccines. For your shot records, 
I'll need a copy of your shy records. I'll need a copy of your TB skin test. If that's already on your shy record, that's fine. And I'll also need a copy of your flu shot. If you are needing a TB skin test or a flu shot, you need to let me know via email that you need those provided to you via either Memorial Hermit Clinic or we need to get you the flu clinic to come out and provide a shot for you. The requirements for you to get um, a TB skin test is free of charge. It doesn't matter. You can go to the Nimitz Clinic. You just need to fill out the application, which can be found on the HST Nimitz website. If you need a flu shot, it's a little different. You either have to have no insurance or Medicaid in order to get a flu shot from Nimitz, from Nimitz Clinic. If you don't have that, we have a cash option where I can have a mobile clinic come out for you all and provide you with flu shots if that's easier. You can get all of this done on your own, but we try to try to accommodate you as best we can. So if you need those things, I need you to send me an email ASAP so I can get that set up for you. All shot records will be due the first Friday in October, which I believe is the 5th, 5th of October. <clears throat> This is your medical release form at the top. I need your name. I do not need your social security ever. Just scratch that out and put school ID number and put your school ID number in that box. This is where I need your parents to put their information, contact information, and their insurance or your insurance information there because I put this in a binder while I'm off campus. And it's easier for me to put in my emergency binder. Something happened to you. I could pull out my binder. I could call mom and dad and say, hey, what are we doing? Or I already know what to do because it's here. Again, I do not ever want your social. So put a line through that. Put student ID. Put your student ID in that box. All right. So that's all of that. There is a locker form on the side counter. With the locker form, you have to get this signed. Please make sure that you read over the rules and regulations of a locker. The basics of it is don't share a locker with anyone. Because if you share a locker with someone and they put something in your locker that's not supposed to be there, then you're the one that's held responsible because your name is tied to it via records from us so again do not do not share lockers a locker is your responsibility you can use it however you like you can put your books you can put your scrubs you can put other books in there from other classes but you are not allowed to share lockers My returning seniors that already have a locker, you will have the same locker from last year. You still have to have an updated permission slip from your parents stating that it's still okay that you have one, but you will still have the same locker from last year. In regards to locker procedures, once you completed your locker application, for those of you who need a locker, Ms. Friday will distribute them for you. Information is for both my clinical rotation students in second and fifth period, as well as my seniors in medical billing and coding in fourth period. Now I'm taking this information directly from the, the syllabus or the outline that we gave your parents at the parent meeting. If you weren't there, you should have stopped by my room to get that information. And I'm just reiterating what you should already know. In regards to your uniform, the scrubs will be $60. If you require a larger size, sizes 2XL to 3XL, 
you'll need to add two additional dollars to your fee. And if you require 4XL to 5XL, you need to add a four dollars to your to to your fee. So if you have it's two, four, six, it's six sets or six pieces of clothing. So you need to add four dollars or two dollars per pieces of clothing that you have. White leather tennis shoes are non-negotiable. They must be leather and I explained this in your clinical packet because we don't want anything such as blood, medication to get through your, your shoes if they're canvas. White undershirt, your choice, it can be short sleeve, it can be long sleeve, but it must be white. You are going back to the scrubs. So scrubs are purchased at the district location. Every high school uses PRN. You cannot go out and buy your own scrubs because unfortunately if you do that, we will ask you to go and purchase them again. PRN accepts cash, credit cards, no checks. We will be going during your class period, so make sure that you bring your payment with you. Some of your parents may, may like to meet us up there, and that's fine. But again, at PRN, they accept credit cards, cash, and no checks. We will be going to PRN on September 21st. So please make sure that you mark that in your calendar. I believe I told you this at the end of your orientation video. But again, I want to reiterate these points because if you're not ready or if you need to make arrangements because you have a cross country meet or you have something for dance, you may have to go out on your own. But I do want to let you know we are going September 21st. If you like to purchase a stethoscope, it's not required. A regular stethoscope is a single head. It just has the full face. That's $6.99. And a dual head where you have the bell and the diaphragm is $14.99. Again, these purchases are optional. If you are someone that is cold all the time, we recommend two jackets. You have the option of buying a white scrub jacket, which is $14.99, or you can purchase a white dry fit jacket, which is $40. It's similar to a Nike dry fit jacket, but again, those are your only options. They're white, all white. Excuse me, and that will suffice for the undershirt if you choose not to wear one. This is for my seniors only. Your lab jacket, you are required to purchase that. It is $17.99, and the monogram is an additional $8. This is your clinical jacket. You'll be required to wear it on your clinical sites. So again, the white lab jacket is $17.99 with an additional $8, and it's for my seniors only. Okay. Um, for my billing and coding students, the additional fee to the course is that your examination is $90. We will set a time in the spring when that money is due, but I like to let you know ahead of time how much it is. We may this year purchase the practice test that's online, and I believe that it's no more than $30, but we'll discuss that as a class, or I'll give you the information, but and you can go about it on your own, but we will discuss it as a class if you like to do that. Health science, this is for both billing and coding and health science. This year, CPR is $20. So let me change this right here. First aid and CPR is $20. This year, you're going to get your two cards, your first aid CPR card, and it also comes with the booklet that accompanies the course. So that's why it's $20. First aid and CPR will be held on September 12th during class. This is a day that you cannot miss because if you are not first day CPR certified, you cannot go on my sites. Again, September 12th during class, $20. Cash only. No checks, no written out to HOSA, $20 cash only. In regards to your rotation sites, when I return, I will go over that information with you. We are still working on adding sites and 
working towards getting facilities to better your clinical experience. All right, let's go down to HOSA. As a clinical student, junior or senior, you are required to join HOSA. That was something that you understood in the application process. Now HOSA, if you weren't a member last year, consists of competitions, community service, and scholarships. The first installment is $40. The second installment is $20. What you are paying for, your state dues is $15. Your national dues is $10. Your HOSA t-shirt is $15. Online testing for competition is five, and fall leadership is fifteen dollars. Now I do not have the date for the fall leadership, but you will get that information in your host of meeting. Now, what it means by additional fees as required, we go to outside places that are not included in your fees for HOSA, such as the Rockets game. That's a very big event that our students enjoy and it does cost extra because you have to pay for your ticket as well as meals outside of outside of a ticket for a game but again those things will be discussed in the host of meeting I do just want to reiterate those points because a lot of you want to know as far as money what will you owe I did touch on your shots. I did touch on your shots regarding your TB skin test and your flu shot. They are due for me Friday, October 19th. Without these, you will not be able to go on my site. If you have an issue, a religious issue, a health issue that you don't take it, I need to know immediately because I'll need to know how to place you because there are some sites that do not require an immunization. If you were unable to obtain these two shots during the summer, both the flu and the TB skin test, you can get the TB skin test for free at the Nimitz Clinic or your personal doctor, you still have time, for the flu shot, there are certain insurance criteria that you have to meet in order to go to the Nimitz Clinic. You either have to have no insurance or Medicaid, or I can schedule a flu clinic on campus if that is more convenient. And if I'm not mistaken, it's no more than $20 with the flu clinic that I can schedule on campus. And as I told you before, if you know you're going to need either one of these, please contact me via email so I can go ahead and schedule it. I'll probably put a sign-up sheet on Google Classroom just in case so I can make sure you guys are taken care of before we go off campus. If you are planning on going to the Nimitz Clinic, you will need to fill out the proper documentation in order to be seen. So it is on the HST Nimitz Weebly website. You'll go to Forms, and it's both in English and Spanish. You'll also need to complete the consent form, and then you'll have to complete the vaccines if you're a minor form. Now, if you're 18, you can fill out the one that's for 18 year olds, but all of the documents are here on the website. You can print them off and take them over to the Nimitz Clinic so you can get scheduled. Now, this right here, when you complete the Nimitz Clinic documents, please do not date. And the reason being is that they, they stamp it on the date that you actually have an appointment, stating that that's when you are established patient. So when you fill out these forms, please do not date them. The white coat ceremony is scheduled for the senior class. It's going to be Wednesday, October 17th at 6.30 p.m. in the Nimitz Auditorium. That is where we showcase our seniors 
for making it to the top level and this is when your white coat is presented to you a white coat is a passage a rite of passage if you will that you have made it to the senior level so you can go ahead and put that on your calendar juniors i encourage you to come because this is what you are aspiring to be this is where you want to go to either pharmacy tech or medical building coding and it's a really nice ceremony now if you are my seniors this does not apply to you for my juniors you will be allowed the opportunity to obtain two additional certifications at no cost to you cert is community emergency response training and we will start that at the end of the second nine weeks going into the third nine weeks and that's where once we completed the entire unit or book if you will you will then demonstrate your skills on a disaster site as to what you know OSHA OSHA will be completed in class it is a 10 hour certification course and once you completed it it's good forever you'll get a certification card it has an ID number and when you apply for jobs and it asks are you OSHA certified you can definitely use it for my seniors that completed it last year I will give you your cards upon my return I believe that's all if I forget anything of course you will either hear my lovely voice or see my face on one of these websites just to remind you and to let you know that I'm here. So until then, y'all take care.